In this video, I'm going to show you how to create this really simple but really effective teleport effect inside of Adobe Premiere Pro. So let's get into it. Now, before we jump into Adobe Premiere, it's really important that we have the correct footage. So first of all, you just want to make sure that you mount your camera to your tripod, put all your settings into manual mode, frame up the shot, and then start recording the empty frame. This is your clean plate and the clean plate is basically just the scene without the person doing the teleport effect. So it's just a blank canvas. It's really important that we have a clean plate because we're going to be using this to make the teleport effect come to life. Now, once you've got a moment of that, maybe say 10 seconds of your clean plate, you want to run into your frame and then you can jump in the air, you can jump off something. You basically want to create a big action that we're going to use as the cut point for the teleport. So in my example, you can see I actually jumped off this rail, which is a little over the top. You don't have to jump off something that tall. You could just do a jump from the ground and that will work perfectly for this effect. Now, it's also really important to note that you want to pay close attention to what's in the background of your shot, because essentially what we're doing here is taking our clean plate and stitching that to the jump of the teleport effect. We want to make sure there's nothing moving in the background because when we cut from one shot to another, you're going to see that movement. Now, the typical culprits for this are traffic in the background of your shot, people walking about in the back of the shot or fast moving clouds. As you can see in my example, unfortunately, I didn't follow my own advice and you can see the clean plate is here, which is fine. I can use this person. That's fine because I can just mask around the person coming in but you can actually see you've got these clouds moving quite quickly up here and they're quite drastically changing between the clean plate and the shot of me jumping in. So that will require a little bit of finessing in the edit, but that's fine. Just try and avoid this. But if you end up with something or somebody in the background, then I'm going to show you how to avoid that. But definitely avoiding people or objects or moving things in the back of the shot will make your life much easier. But once you've got your footage, we need to drop this into Adobe Premiere Pro. So let's begin the editing process. So as you can see, this is my video clip inside of Adobe Premiere. I've got the clean plate here. So this is the empty frame. As you can see, this is static. And then this here is the jump. So what we'll do is we'll just separate these because this is one video clip at the moment. So we'll just cut this. So we'll go C on the keyboard to load the razor tool, make a cut there. And then we'll go to the point where I've jumped off this rail. There you go, about here. So we want to cut into around here. So we'll make a cut there. Then we'll press V on the keyboard, delete that middle part of the video and bring these together. So when I play this back, you can see we've got clean plate into the teleport effect. Now, like I was explaining before we jumped into Premiere, because there is a little bit of a difference between the clean plate and the shot here, there's quite a jump cut there, as you can see, which doesn't look too great. So if you didn't have this drastic movement, if you just had a very simple shot, maybe you were against a solid background and nothing changed, then you can just carry on with the effects like this. But because I've got the clouds moving and this person moving on the right, I need to go ahead and mask the teleport effect in. So I'm just going to drag this teleport layer up onto video layer two, like this. We'll zoom in on that. And then what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go to opacity. We'll select the free draw bezier tool. And I'm just going to draw a mask around myself, jumping into the frame like this. Then I'll go ahead and create a brand new keyframe on the mask path by selecting toggle animation. We'll move over a frame and as you can see, I'm disappearing and that's because the mask has not updated. So we'll just pull this down. And then if you fall out of the mask for any reason, as you can see, my arms creeping out, just adjust that mask accordingly. Then we'll move over again, move that mask across. I'll just move it up a little bit and just keep working through this process to make sure that your subject is always in the mask. Now you just want to go back to the very beginning and go through frame by frame and make sure that your subject or your person is always within this mask. If they creep out of the mask, then just go ahead and make one of those micro adjustments to make sure that they're within the mask again like this. But once you've done that, we'll play this back from the very beginning and you can see we can actually see the edge of the mask here and that's because the background has changed. So what we need to do is we need to select that layer. We'll increase the mask feather. So increase it to somewhere around 100%. And as you can see, it's starting to fade into the person. So we're just going to increase the mask expansion to expand the size of that mask. If I select the mask, you'll see what this is doing. So you can see that's actually expanding the size of the mask. 
The aim here is to try and get this dashed line here to line up with this solid line. So we'll just increase that to around there. And in my example, it is around 50, 52%. Now we'll play this back and you can see that is much nicer. There's still a little bit of movement happening back there, but it's much less noticeable. Now you can push this teleport effect back to wherever you want to. So I'm just going to hold on the clean plate for a second. And then we'll go into the teleport effect. So clean plate, teleport, and we're in. Now at the moment, that didn't really look like much. That just looked like a jump cut from one shot to another. So this is where we need to go ahead and use some effects to take this to the next level. Now, the first thing that I like to do is add a little bit of a flicker. So I'm just going to zoom in on the start of that teleport effect. We'll press C on the keyboard to load the razor tool. We'll make a cut at this frame here. Then we'll go across one frame and make a cut, one frame and make a cut, one frame and make a cut. Then I'm just going to go ahead and delete the second and the fourth videos there. So there's this nice flicker effect there. And of course, you can always reduce the opacity of the first one down to around 30%. And we can reduce the opacity of the second one. Let's go to about 60%. So it looks like they're slowly starting to appear. Now, from here, I'm just going to go ahead and create a new adjustment layer because I want to create a flash effect. So we'll go new item, adjustment layer, press OK. We'll drag this adjustment layer on top of that effect and we can just shorten this down because we only need it for that one brief moment. We'll go roughly halfway between this transition into the teleport. Then we'll go effects and search for levels. We'll drop levels onto the adjustment layer. And then at this point, roughly, we want to increase the RGB white input level up to around, let's go 190 in this example. Then we'll go back three frames to the left. Pull this up to 255. Then we'll go back to that center point and go across maybe five keyframes, somewhere around there. And when we play this back, that's just adding this nice subtle flash in. Of course, you can always pull these closer together if you want that to be more dramatic or you can increase the brightness. It's up to you. Now, if you actually film this effect with your camera, if somebody was teleporting in front of you, then that flash would probably cause an interlaced effect on your flash. So rather than a really clean exposure flash on your video, it would probably get split so the bottom half would be overexposed and the top half wouldn't be. So let's recreate that. So we'll copy that adjustment layer. We'll hold Option and drag that up. Or alternatively, we can just copy and paste by going Command C, moving over selecting video layer three and then pasting that in. So the keyboard shortcut is command C, command V. We'll drag that up onto video layer four. And then what we'll do here is we'll just zoom out. So we'll select fit, go 50%. We'll go into the levels, select the free draw bezier, and we'll just draw a rectangle on the top half of the frame. Feel free to adjust that if you need to. And then we'll offset these keyframes by a frame or two. It doesn't have to be much. Now, when we play this back, you can see that's not quite perfect. It's too slow. So we're just going to decrease the gap between all of these keyframes. That's better, although I'm just going to shift it across to the right a little bit more. And that's starting to look great. But the problem is the edge of this is just a little bit too soft. There's too much feathering there. So what we'll do is we'll go in to mask one. We'll go to mask feather and we'll pull this down to zero. Let's play this back. That's better. Although it wouldn't just be on the top, it would also be on the bottom. So what we'll do is we'll copy that levels effect on the adjustment layer. So we'll go Command C, Command V. We'll nudge these keyframes over to the right a touch. And then we'll just select inverted on the mask. So as you can see, we've got one on the top and then one on the bottom. And of course, if you want to, feel free to adjust the value of that middle keyframe. So at the moment, it's 194, but we'll make this more dramatic. We'll go 1, 130, and we'll do the same on the other levels effect. So we'll go to that middle point. Might have to drag those over to the cursor, then increase that to around 130, 140. Now we'll play this back. You can see that creates this nice strobe light effect. Now that looks great, but the problem is there'd be a little bit of camera shake, I feel. So what we're gonna do is select everything. I'm just gonna delete the end of this because we don't need the end. We're only focusing on the teleport effect. So we'll select all of that. We'll go right click and we'll select nest. You can rename this if you want. So let's go teleport effect. 
press OK. And then from here, we're just going to increase the scale. Let's go to 105 maybe, just a little bit. And then at this point where the teleport is starting to happen, we want to go ahead and create a new keyframe on position and rotation. Then we'll go towards the end of the effect, so somewhere around here. We'll create a new keyframe on the positions and rotation again. Then we'll go to that first keyframe. We'll go two frames to the right. We'll move the position across and add some rotation. So let's go two. Mm, let's go one. Then we'll go two frames to the right. We'll go minus one on the rotation and adjust the position a little. Two frames to the right. And again, we'll go maybe, maybe plus 0.5 on this. And then, of course, position again. Two frames to the right again. We'll go negative 0.4 and adjust that position. Let's see how that's looking so far. As you can see, it's quite an aggressive camera shake. So you can do that more subtle if you wanted to. But I think that looks great. Of course, as well, if there was this much camera movement at the time, there'd be a little bit more motion blur. Everything is a bit crisp at the moment. So what we're going to do is go into our project bin drag a new adjustment layer on top of this and we'll shorten this down so that it's just the effect. So somewhere around here, there you go. Then we'll go effects, search for blur. I'm gonna drop Gaussian blur onto this and roughly at the point of the transition. So there you go, somewhere around here, we'll increase the blurriness, select repeat edge pixels to get rid of this black border. Create a brand new keyframe on the blurriness We'll go back on ourselves maybe three frames, pull this to zero. Then we'll go back to that center point, go to the right, maybe five or six keyframes, back to zero. Let's play this back. Now that looks good, but the problem is it just looks like we've just made everything blurry. So we're going to change the blur dimensions from horizontal and vertical to just horizontal. So there you go, we get this motion blur looking effect now. That looks a lot better but I do need to offset this a little bit so that it starts when the movement begins. There you go, around there. And of course, feel free to adjust that second value if you wanted to as well. Feel free to make that even blurrier to make that more dramatic. There you go. The great thing is though, because we've stacked all of these effects on top of each other now, so we've got these general levels adjustments, we've got the blurring us, and then we've got this strobe light effect coming in here you can't actually tell that the background is changing. So because we've got a little bit of movement in the clouds, cutting from the one shot to the second shot, we're seeing a little bit of movement back there. But these effects are basically hiding that ugliness at the back there, which is great. And then of course as well, if you had assets like particles or smoke, then you can always just go ahead and add those into your teleport pre-comp or your nest. So you just go into this nested sequence and drop all of your assets on top of this. And then when you go back to the teleport nest, that is going to look really awesome. So as you can see in this example, I've got these sparkles here. So this is just an asset that I downloaded from Production Crates. This isn't sponsored by them, by the way. These are just a really awesome company. I love downloading their assets because it really does make these sort of effects really come to life. So I just throw that into here. I just decrease the scale down a little. Move that on top of the teleport effect like this. So as you can see, the effect looked really cool before, but just adding these particle hits on just really helps to bring this effect to life. Of course, you can always adjust the level so that you have more yellows in there so that it leans towards that flash color as well. Or you could stack in some more effects so you could add smoke hits or muzzle flashes, whatever you want to add in there. And that's really gonna help to bring this effect to life. Of course, I'm just gonna turn those particles off. So we'll turn those off, go back to our main composition, our main sequence. And even without those effects, this effect looks really cool. So whether you decide to add those extra assets in or you just keep it at this basic effect here, this is a really awesome and really effective teleport effect. So there you go. Thank you ever so much for watching this video. I really do appreciate your support and hopefully I will see you on the next video. See you there.